Let's go through some tips to avoid getting stuck and getting yourself unstuck if it still happens anyway. Around 85% of you in a poll said this has happened to you before. It's not fun for any of us. And depending on the tools and the supplies you have on hand, it could be the difference between getting it out on your own versus having to call a tow truck. We'll take you through our latest adventure now. did not have a lot of confidence in me when I posted the pictures of my tractor stuck yet again. I put out there an over under 30 minutes or less or is it going to take longer than 30 minutes to get it out and 80 percent of you or so said it's going to take longer than 30 minutes and I was probably being a little optimistic there. Um, definitely took longer than 30 minutes but well once we figured out what to do it was pretty easy really. Now one thing that didn't help this time around and it's kind of satisfying to say this is locking rear differential all right didn't make an iota of difference we were stuck bad is this the worst we've ever been stuck or no yeah chris says yeah yeah it was, it was bad so this whole th so okay i didn't just drive this thing back there and think oh nothing's gonna happen i had uh i've driven back here several times actually with different pieces of equipment and this tractor i took back there going forwards and then came across some really heavy brush that I didn't want to drive over, all right? And I was slowly going back there. I checked my tires to see if they're getting wet, if they're getting muddy, if they're staying dry on dry ground, if they're sinking down, all that kind of stuff. And nothing was happening. I went straight in, was mowing. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to back out and then back in because that's I want to hit it with the mower first instead of driving over it. And so backed all the way out, no problem. Back all the way in, that's when the problem started to happen. And... Uh, my fatal mistake, I think, in all of this was some way, somehow, I have no idea, my tractor was wound up in two-wheel drive and not four-wheel drive. And so I cannot see my rear tires from, from the cabin here. But I think as I started to sink down, I didn't realize that it was in two-wheel drive and it was just digging a hole right with those rear two tires really quickly. And when I realized I was not moving, I stopped right away to not make things worse but the damage had already been done. I was buried. I had a 10 foot brush hog on the back. That was, I had the three point raise as high as it could go and that was bottomed out. The whole bottom side of the tractor was bottomed out with every little thing that there is providing resistance and hanging up. And then of course the front tires buried down to the axle as well. And of course I was just out here on a Saturday, I think it was just, there was no video footage of this happening. I was just brush hogging trying to, I just got this whole, whitetail habitat plan designed from Jeff Sturgis with whitetail habitat solutions. I had him out here, wanted him out to one of my properties for a long time. And so super excited to put that plan in place. And I was just, just kicking it off uh, with the first steps of that. And um, anyway, we'll have more on that coming down the road too. But I had bought a Yankum rope right after the last time that we got stuck in anticipation for this. I was confident we could back up the F-350 or the skid steer one or the other on some dry ground nearby and just yank this thing out, no problem. We were gonna have this thing out in under 30 minutes. Well, that was a miserable failure. Didn't even, didn't even budge the tractor out of there. There was so much suction and resistance buried down in that muck with the tractor, about a 10,000 pound tractor. And I will say I was yanking it with the yanking rope, but I also have seen enough videos out there where a shackle breaks, a rope breaks, something else, and comes flying back at uh, the machine and that was constantly going through in mind as well. So I was being aggressive, but not crazy aggressive, even though I know it's designed to do that. Now I am one to always start with the, the path of least resistance, the lowest amount of effort first. Uh, so in, in this case, I did not unhook the brush hog first. I just simply wanted to see if we could yank it out with that yank and rope, okay? And that didn't work. Um, next step is trying the bucket, all right? You have the old bucket trick. We've done a video on that before too, and that can work in the right scenario, but this was not working here, all right? And, and it's uh, also dependent. I had a skid steer stuck one time, maybe twice actually now, with a mulcher head on the front of it. And a mulcher head you can't do anything with on the skid steer, right? You're not gonna get any leverage like you could with a bucket or even a set of forks. If you have a bucket on there, it's a great tool. And we were in a, near a creek side and, and uh, got ourselves worked out of there pretty easily. 
Also, depending on the type of tires and the wheels that you have, all right, the R1 tires are going to be a narrow tire, and these are filled with liquid ballast, which normally works in your advantage. However, when you are digging a trench, it just helps you do it a lot quicker if you have weight inside those tires, and it's not like you're going to empty those out, but it's just a consideration to keep in mind on the areas that you're working in. So as we continued on, the next step was to take the mower off, all right? That was a, I don't know what it weighs, a 1,000 pounds, 1,200 pounds, 1,500 pounds. It's a heavy mower on the backside, and it's just a whole huge plane that is providing resistance on the back of that machine and not working to our advantage. So we ended up unhooking that and then trying to yank it out again. And so we were doing all this before church on a Sunday morning and didn't have a lot of time. We had 90 minutes, a 90 minute window there. Um, and that includes doing all the camera work, which is like a third of that time when you're setting drones up, changing batteries, changing angles, hooking on mics, all this kind of stuff. So it's very cumbersome to do so. And we had maybe an hour or so, an hour or so of time to actually try um, all these different things to get it out before church didn't work. And so we had to wait until Tuesday morning, two days later, we just couldn't make it happen on Monday. And this, it's killing me. I need to continue to use this tractor to get things done uh, and plant seed in the ground here very soon. And so I'm, I'm three days behind schedule now uh, from where I was, I lost three days there. And so it's pretty frustrating as far as that goes, but I had a, a clear plan of action. This has worked for me before in the past, had a whole huge stack of old fence posts that were out here from when we bought this place. Decided to put the pallet forks on my skid steer, get my fork extensions, uh, get a few pieces of firewood to put in the very bottom of the front um, wheel holes that were underneath there, and then uh, get to work. And so the plan here is use the skid steer to lift up underneath the tractor bucket, all right? And so then we can get those front tires out of the holes. Put the firewood, just kind of the smaller chunks in the very bottom of those holes to kind of serve as a base, and then use those long fence posts as, well, they fill in the space, but then also sort of as a, a makeshift ramp to get out of the holes. And they do sell things called traction boards too. I don't know if they are heavy duty, heavy duty enough to work on a tractor like this, um, but you find, you can find, we found timbers, you know, logs, branches in the woods before to get a skid steer unstuck. Find what you can on hand if you don't have a, a random pile of fence posts hanging around. Now tie off point, that's critical as well. On the back side of the tractor, it's a lot easier somewhere on the drawbar or the drawbar base uh, is typically a, a good place to hook off. On the front side is tough and I got to get 511s making uh, tie down points for the front of these tractors. I should have had those on here already, but I don't. Um, so we used part of the, the grill guard base. That was about as good as we could find. I had thought about using the bucket. We've got the JU Fabworks bucket on there, but I was going to be using the Yankum rope and really heaving on this thing and I just in my head was thinking man with that uh, with that force going on there I didn't want to do something on that bucket and get it all wonky so I decided not to do that on there but that's that's the challenge find a good stable strong tie up point on on both ends of the spectrum there that way you're not causing any damage to either machine and so that does two things number one obviously it gets those front tires out of the ruts but then it also releases all of that suction and traction from the front of the tractor all the way back into where the rear axle is now in the mud. And that is the only point at, at this time that is has that resistance and that suction and is trapped down in there. The rest of it is maybe not quite at ground level, but you freed it up enough uh, to make a huge difference. So I looked at my watch from the moment we started actually doing the work here. After we had the camera set up, when we started putting the firewood down in the holes and everything else, it was 9.09 got everything situated the way that we wanted, hooked up the Yankum rope and gave it a go. We had that thing pulled out of there at 931. So 22 minutes later, we had that thing out once we had our plan in action. And could we have done that in the very beginning? Yes, certainly could have. But again, it's going back to that path of least resistance where why go through all the effort? You know, I, I mean, I had to go to the back of the property, swap out the bucket for the forks, get the stack of firewood, yeah, 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 to bring it all back down here. And that all took some time as well. Um, but if you, <laughs> my lazy mind, if I can avoid doing that, I'm going to. And so this is why I brought the forks down there really to begin with anyway, it was so that I could fork underneath that brush hog afterwards. And we've got the JCB teleskid. Um, had actually planned on booming that out quite a bit to reach the brush hog, but kind of forgot about that until Chris told me uh, towards the, the tail end there. And as mucky as it was, I... The, the, the thing just wanted to sink down in the ground. And so when I had that, uh, I had to basically lift the brush hog just enough to get it off the ground. And then 
um, rein in that, that teleskid there on, on the boom because it just did not want to pick it up because it wanted to keep sinking out on the ground. So was able to get that out very easily right afterwards too. And all in all, this wound up being a pretty easy recovery. Now there's some other things that we could have done. I certainly hadn't pulled all the tricks out of the bag yet. You'll hear guys talk about strapping a two by four to one of the tires or two of the tires. And that does seem to work really well in video. I think that's got a, a little bit of an element of danger to it potentially, um, but certainly I can see that being usable. Also, I have a whole big pile of gravel and I had thought if worst case scenario, we haul gravel back here and, and get that shoved underneath everything, you know, kind of dig out the mug, put some gravel down in there and try to just dry out the area a bit and make some ramps that way. Hijack lifts too, another popular uh, solution. I actually bought a set of hijack lifts and they uh, came in damaged and so I returned them and then just never got another set. But that's a, a popular option, especially like when we got our gator stuck, I can see that being really helpful there. Depending on the season that you're in, getting back to that gator, we froze that thing down in the mud. It was in winter time and it had sunk down uh, right along the shoreline and we left it one night and came back the next day and it compounded the issue because not only was it just stuck down in there, but now it was frozen down in there. And actually when we went to go move it, the front axle broke off on the, uh, the front left side. And so that just compounded the issue way, way more. And so keep that in mind, depending on the season that you're, you're getting stuck. So it's good to know I'm not alone, okay? 85% of you have been in this scenario before. I consider myself pretty fortunate to get out uh, without too much, too much effort, really, overall. Worst case, we were set up like right where the tractors and the skidsters at right now, that a, a tow truck could have come in with a big old winch and winched us out. Um, didn't want to go there, that was absolute last resort. But I think use some patience, use some resourcefulness, some cleverness, and you're gonna get out. But I think also be careful with where you take your, your equipment, you know? Try to walk it in advance. It's not gonna tell you everything, but you can at least get an idea if it's spongy or not. Um, if you have multiple machines, maybe take a smaller machine out there. You know, the skid steer, we've got stuck in these same kind of areas too. So that muck is just nasty. We've been in a, I think we're in a mild drought right now, aren't we? Yeah, and so that muck is still the exact same way that it always is, even though we haven't had, we've had one rain in the last, month or five weeks or six weeks, something like that. It's just, that stuff never dries out. I mean, you can see, it's just, it's disgusting. Now I do think it's kind of funny because last year, last fall, we got the skid steer stuck and used the Kubota to help get it unstuck, but the tables have turned. Now this time, the Kubota was stuck and we used the skid steer to help get it unstuck. And so it's, it's just funny. I'm pretty good at getting things stuck, but I'm also getting a lot better in getting them unstuck watch our our videos out there you can learn the things to do that are successful the things that are not successful you want to know this stuff in advance because it is not fun we've that gator was the was the worst wouldn't you wouldn't you say the gator was horrible huh yeah this is gorgeous yeah i mean that that gator was just terrible there was no access down by a lake with lake houses and everything else it was that was a nightmare um so i guess that was the worst we've been stuck not the not this one huh but either way I'm happy to be out. I can get back to work. We're going to tell you more about this 10 foot brush hog in a future video. We just got a whole bunch of iron craft attachments in. Some amazing stuff. Made in America too. And we sell tractor attachments of all kinds. So check us out at goodworkstractors.com. Our prices include shipping, rewards, and financing too. A lot of you like to critique our videos, our methods for getting unstuck and other things. So leave a comment down below and watch the other stuck videos and tell us what we did wrong. It helps other viewers not get those things wrong in the future. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by, and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.